So now it's time to hear from our founder and CEO, Mr. Shiv Kumar PR. He is the spirit of in innovation, leadership, and excellence. He has been a guiding force behind our company's success. With a vision that goes beyond just business growth, he has fostered a culture of integrity, inclusivity, and relentless pursuit of excellence. Under his leadership, we have not only reached new heights, but also have set new standards in our industry. So he inspires us to push boundaries, think creativity, and always aim for the best. So let's welcome him with a huge round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to see you all, lovely people. We are all working as part of the semiconductor industry. So we should know the history of our industry. That's what today I'm going to talk about. What is our history? History is very important. If you know the history, we can understand how things worked for us, what worked for us, what didn't work for us, and how we can learn from our mistakes, and how we can think of doing something big ambitiously. Right? So, I am going to take you through the incredible journey of semiconductors, how we invented the IC, and why we invented the IC, who invented the IC, and today, what actually we are trying to do as part of the industry, right? If you recollect the history, great engineers, Jack Kilby and Robert Noyce invented the integrated circuit to help their country, United States, to upgrade its space and defense applications. That's how everything started. So Jack Kilby and Robert Noyce, they invented the integrated circuit. In the 1960s, US government invested heavily in the semiconductor industry. That's how the chip makers in the United States, they back big contracts. So we could say, U.S. Pentagon had created the Silicon Valley in the United States. Let's explore, explore this journey, how it happened. Robert Noyce, Gordon Moore, and six other engineers left Shockley Semiconductors and they founded a company called Fairchild Semiconductors. That's how they started their journey. And after founding Fairchild Semiconductors, they got a big contract, business contract from NASA for its moon mission. So they designed IC to build computer for NASA. And that computer was something special. That computer was thousand times lighter than INIAC, the first computer. You know, that was their incredible achievement. With that success, they got huge business from US government and they transformed their company Fairchild into a company with thousands of employees and their revenue increased up to 21 million USD in two years. They were so ambitious, so again, they left Fairchild Semiconductors and founded a company called Intel. So the same team, Robert Noyce, Gordon Moore, and six other engineers, they founded Intel. So when it comes to semiconductors, whether you like it or not, you have to remember these two companies. One is Intel, the other one is Texas Instruments. Right? That's how we started our journey in the semiconductor space. They founded Intel and they introduced DRAM chips. That was their first project. 
it was a big success they were so ambitious they wanted to conquer the computers memory market that was their ambition they introduced dram chips and also in their journey they designed the world's first microprocessor called 4004 do you know intel introduced first microprocessor at the same time what was happening in 1970s japanese they wanted to create calculators so they wanted to make use of all these microprocessors designed by us chip makers like intel that's how japanese introduced calculators calculators were like smartphones in 1970 it was so popular with that success intel decided to leave dram market they didn't want to proceed with dram business vertical and they wanted to focus more on microprocessor at the same time what was happening engineers like us we want to we wanted to design personal computer we were so ambitious and intel decided yes we are going to focus more on processor and that's how intel introduced multi core processors and that's how x86 became so popular so next to calculator pc became so popular and what really happened except apple computer every other computer was using intel's processor so intel became monopoly virtually monopoly in the pc space that's how intel became so popular so here one thing is very obvious if you recollect the journey our journey started off with designing calculators designing chips for calculators and then we moved on with personal computers you know we were designing multi core processors for the pcs and then smart entrepreneurs like steve jobs introduced smartphone smartphone became so popular and smartphone demand it it was actually demanding all kinds of chips not only the processors we wanted to have gpus also we wanted to create modern chips so qualcomm became popular they introduced their modern chips and they also contributed heavily in the 2g space that was critical for smartphone and with that expertise we moved on with designing chips for iot iot became so popular and today we are talking about designing chips for artificial intelligence this is how our journey has been we started our journey with calculator and then we moved on with personal computer and then smartphones became popular and then iot and today we are talking about designing chips for artificial intelligence why i am talking about it you think of the innovations innovations we have gone through we design microprocessors for small devices like calculators and then we upgraded microprocessors into multi core processor for personal computer and then arm invented risk reduced instruction set computer and that became so popular for smartphone and arm was the company that introduced fabless ip business model that was something unique and that was required for smartphones so risk was the big innovation and then qualcomm introduced modern chips their chip snapdragon was so popular and then nvidia's gpu became so popular and today we are talking about a new processor called risk 5 so the reason why i am sharing this story with you because i want to introduce a risk 5 instruction set architecture to all you engineers this is our future why risk 5 is required now in this ai era we are looking for a standard framework something like a risk 5 instruction set architecture to design various kinds of processors something like uvm you all love uvm 
universal verification methodology because it's a standard framework, industry standard methodology. That's how we want to introduce risk five instruction set architecture as a standard architecture for all kinds of processor. Whatever the processor you want to realize, whether it's going to be a central processing unit or GPU or DSP or image processor or primarily accelerators. Today what we need, we need different kinds of accelerators, right? So, what am I doing at Maven Silicon? I am working continuously on this RISC-V instruction set architecture. This is so fascinating. You know, I worked pretty much in the EDA industry as application engineer, and my expertise was EDA, primarily verification methodologies. That's how I built my career, but later on, when I founded Maven Silicon, I was asking myself, how best I can teach all these methodologies to the next generation of engineers, engineers like you, and what is really needed for them. I know languages, I know methodologies, and then how can I teach all these languages and methodologies? How can I share my expertise with the next generation of engineers? How it is going to be? How my journey is, journey is going to be at Maven Silicon? That's what I was thinking about. And then I thought like, it's better to teach something like microprocessor as part of digital electronics. I tell you, that's very important. That was missing initially, but later on, we introduced microprocessor, and today we are teaching RISC-V processor as part of our curriculum. I tell you one thing, if you understand the processor, you can understand any kind of system any kind of system. For example, you look at your smartphone. If someone comes and says like, smartphone needs 64-bit operating system. Why? Why it demands 64-bit operating system? Because we use 64-bit processor there. If you understand the processor, you can understand how we choose a particular operating system, then how we deal with various other things, not only hardware system design, the other things like, embedded systems programming. You think of verification. For example, you are there to verify your SOC. There will be firmware test cases. Usually people will come and tell you, like, you know, there are C test cases, and you have to figure out how to run all the C test cases as part of your UVM test bench. So you might think of creating some virtual sequences, and then you will make use of DPI, and then you will try to call the C test cases. That's how you build your verification environment. But the question is, why you need to deal with C test cases? What is that firmware? If you know the processor, you can easily understand what is that firmware. So basically, when it comes to any system, we deal with different kinds of softwares. Machine mode software. Firmware is the best example. But you think of supervisor mode software. That could be your operating system. And how the boot sequence happens. When you put on the power, how everything is going to start from zero, and how about that sequence. So if you understand the system, how it functions, you can think of verifying any kind of chip, whether it's a simple embedded systems microcontroller, or whether it's going to be a complex smartphone chip. You can deal with any kind of chip. So the good news that I would like to share with you is we are giving you the free access, demo access, for our latest RISC-V courses. We have come up with uh, three different courses. One is RISC-V processor IP design course. The other one is RISC-V processor IP verification course. The other one is RISC-V processor SOC design course. This is very detailed, very exhaustive. You have to spend three to six months time to complete this course. And we are introducing a new initiative called EMAC. Can you guess what it means, EMAC? Very similar to Mac only. So in this case, it means empowering Mac 
alumni community. Let's give a big hand. <laughs> this is our new initiative, eMac, empowering Mac alumni community.